have a Flash Forge Venture 5M Pro, and I have an error E0015 extruder temperature error. Now this is brand new 3D printer. I'm really surprised that having this kind of problem so early on, I've only done about nine to 10 prints. Flash Forge, they sent me new nozzles that didn't work. So it wasn't the nozzle, and I have come to find out what the problem is, why there's an extruder temperature error. Okay, obviously it's something to do with extruder. Recommend that you unplug your power cable from the back, power it off, and now we're gonna go ahead and find out what the problem is here. So I've already taken some of this off and I'm just gonna quickly show you, uh, I've already unscrewed some, some things, so you're gonna be like, wow, how's that come off so fast? Because I've already unscrewed stuff. All right, so go ahead and take your tube out for your filament. And this, this part is like the magnetic, the fan, you're just gonna kinda lean it towards you and then it just kind of pops off there. And that that actually is connected with a uh, cable, so you're gonna disconnect it up in the top right there. So you will disconnect that from the, the interface, the extruder interface board, okay? And then there's two screws right here. One, two, use your Allen key that they gave you. You're gonna take this, to this guy off, just wiggle it off left and right, and then you're gonna see this cable is going to be plugged in. This is the power supply to the extruder. It's going to be plugged into that. Just kind of squeeze it on the sides and kind of wiggle it out a little bit. If you can, pull it out straight, but don't pull it by the wires. Never pull cables by the wires. Pull them by the plastic and just pull out straight. You can try to wiggle it if you want. Now I'm just going to kind of sit that off to the side. So I come to find out what the problem is. It's pretty wild. All right, so real quick, two screws here. You want to take them off. All right, I've already taken them off, so this comes right off like that. This is uh, the extruder interface card. Flashforge actually sent me that one, and that was not the problem. Let me get my flashlight because it's hard to see here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna. I'm going to show you right now what my problem was, which more than likely might be your problem. And if it is, you're going to have to get Flashforge to send you a new cable okay if you look right here right there you see it boom that cable right there the wires are shorted they're burned out isn't that crazy so flashforge actually sent me the new cable this new cable to replace it and they also sent me the the board for it so here it is let me just show it to you i'm going to set that to the side don't lose your screws you're going to need your screws keep them all together so this is what they sent, and it is coming from China, so it's going to take some time. But they do have a warehouse in Texas, but this is the cable that you're going to need. All right, so that is the extruder cable or the printhead bus cable, okay? They also sent me this because this is what it plugs into. So you could just replace that, or you can do both. In this situation, I'm going to do both. All right, guys, so what I recommend is that you take the nozzle off. To take the nozzle, you squeeze these two red tabs, and then you pull down on the nozzle while squeezing these two. Okay, I took the nozzle out. Set that down. All right, so we need to remove three screws. That's all you need to do, three long screws. And so the Allen keys they give you is two millimeter, two and a half, and a three millimeter. You're gonna use the two millimeter. Now these are not magnetic. So what I did is I got a magnetic screwdriver. And what you're doing is you're removing these three long screws right here, just the three, okay? There's a fourth one in there, but you don't need to remove that fourth one. That's holding further on the back. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So where the holes are, you have one, two, and then you have three, that big hole. And if you look down below, you'll see a screw back there. Don't remove that screw that's below that big circle. Don't remove that, that screw there, okay? I already removed them. I'm just trying to make it as easy as I can for you guys. So what that does is it allows you to pull out the fan that also is connected to the, the filament tube line. I'm not sure what you would call it, but it's this middle piece right here. You're only lifting it up. So I'm going to lift that up real quick, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All you're doing is pulling up on this piece, this plastic. It'll slide right up. Kind of wiggle it a little bit towards you. And there you go. Okay, that's all it is. It's the fan. And then it has 
you know, this is where the filament comes down to. All right, you can set that to the side. Okay, so now we're at the point of actually replacing the cable and the interface card for that extruder a bus cable, okay? It is still the two millimeter, okay? So just remember righty tighty, lefty loosey when you undo screws. That's just standard all around for pretty much everything that's a screw is righty tighty, lefty loosey. Turn it left or counterclockwise to loosen, turn it right or clockwise to tighten. All right, now I'm gonna get my magnetic screwdriver and I'll pull that out. And keep that to the side and try to keep your screws next to whatever it is that it belongs to or somewhere that you know you don't lose it and get mixed up where, where things belong. You don't, you're not really having to remove a lot of screws, fortunately, so it shouldn't be that hard to keep track of stuff. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this last one. It's just two. That's all it is. It's pretty uh, simple to get to, too. And you can see the interface board has already become loose. All right, let me shine the light so you guys can see what's going on. All right, we're just gonna literally pull up on that and that should come right out. This is my first time doing this, guys. Boom, came right out. This is causing the extruder temperature error. There's three cables out of the four on this connector that somehow separate it and I guess overheat it. See, we got this guy. So what I'm gonna do is just match it up to how this is. Okay, so looks like it would go that way. Yep, cable, this is the one that you need. I'm not sure if it's on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if it is. Check it out on Amazon. If not, you're still within warranty. I would ask for this cable and this interface card as well, okay? You have oils on your fingers, so hold things by the ends and do not touch it directly by your fingers when you do this kind of stuff. And just to show you which way that goes in with the two lines facing up, they're gonna push into the connector that way, okay? So what I did was I put my thumb behind the, the plastic piece on the other side and I pushed in hard and then until you hear it snap and then you see it's fully in, it's flush. Okay, that's what you want. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this back down. So this is what the nozzle plugs into, okay? So the nozzle, if you can imagine this, the nozzle piece right here is plugging into that. I'll actually put it in so you can see. There you go. The nozzle would be plugging up into that card, and then that card on the other side has a port. So one port for the nozzle at the bottom, and then the other port is for the cable, which then the cable goes, plugs into the board, the extruder board, which is this guy on the bottom side. You got one, two, three, four connectors and then you have the power cable so it's plugging into that okay so i'm thinking the nozzle probably got very hot which in turn made that super hot which in turn made the cable entirely hot so the nozzle was fine but the cable eventually the wires got so hot so i would definitely take your time with your prints let it cool down lower the temperature if you can Give it a break so that this cable will last a lot longer and not burn out like that. All right, guys, so now we're going to put this back on the same way that it came. Two screws to put that down on the left and right sides. That's correct. That would be this way. All right. So as you see, it's not going to pull. port's not going to go all the way down in the hole. It's just going to rest where the screws are going to go. So I'm going to screw that one side in just a little bit and then this side just kind of push back so that I can get it straight. And then we're going to put this guy on. I just turned my flash on so I apologize. The video has been dark. You don't want to over tighten the screws. Just tighten it so you can no longer turn it. This one I know I didn't tighten all the way. And that's it. Don't, don't over tighten. Alright. So, so far so good. Alright. So next, we're going to put our fan back on with the filament bypass. I'm not sure what you call this wheel, but 
this is the fan and that's gonna slide right on this right back the same way it was in just move this wire out of the way because that wire has to kind of bend down and it just kind of slides right in there and that wire is gonna stick up push it down and these two black and red wires stay behind these two tabs make sure that's flush and then you're just gonna throw in your three screws one two and three just gonna tighten these up they are in place and when you put screws back onto something I would recommend not tighten them all at one time put them in and tighten them a little bit what I'm saying is don't tighten one all the way then the next one just kind of get them in and then just do them at different times kind of want to evenly distribute the, the load if that makes sense all right so the next step is we need to get the extruder interface card on and this we need to plug in the cables we have one two three four ports and we need to plug them in okay see the board is going straight you'll notice that the board was not like straight because the wires it was kind of like tilting up because the wires are so strong that it's forcing that plate up but uh, you'll notice that the plate is starting to go straight as I tighten these two screws and you're gonna plug that in the back okay and then we have the last port that wasn't plugged in is the power to the fan for the front of the extruder that's gonna get plugged into that guy right there it's the last one we didn't do and just so you can see how that goes in lines facing out all them lines like that okay and go ahead and get that down and put your screws in okay so you can actually magnetize this one when you're doing the two screws on top just so you can keep this from dangling and not letting the wire dangle like that and get pinched but this does go on first so this has to drop down after you get your two screws on you see them there left and right you'll hear it click then you can pop this guy on. It goes on the top first and then it's magnetized at the bottom there. Like that. You can run your tube down if you want at this point, but we need to get those two screws into this to hold that down. All right, as you can see, this goes in with the triangle facing you, the nozzle, and the connector goes to the back. And you're just going to put it in straight up and that white piece will connect up into that black connector and you hear it click and that's how you know it's fully inserted now the final step is to actually turn it on and see if we're rocking and rolling with the 3d printer let's turn it on right now that's to get around to this so i really hope this helps you guys and we'll find out right now if the temperature extruder error is gone. And I'm assuming it will be because this was the main culprit. As you can see right here, the wires are shorted out. It says initializing, lights turned on. It is starting over basically you know to reset I was doing everything in the world to figure out the temperature extruder error and it's bringing me to the home screen so that's a good sign get everything leveling vibration test PID calibrate start So the extruder was actually saying zero and the extruder temperature was never increasing at all. It would just say zero. The platform would get hot. The extruder would never increase in temperature. Yep, the problem has been solved. The platform has been heated up to 60 degrees Celsius. The extruder is now heating up. Wow, I can't believe it, guys. So the extruder is heating up and that is a good sign a good indication that 
the problem is no longer there. The temperature extruder error is gone because the extruder is heating up and it's going to heat up to 230 degrees Celsius. That means the problem has definitely been solved. All because of this cable right here. I would definitely contact Flash Forge, ask for this new printhead cable. That's what you're going to need to fix this problem with the extruder temperature error. Hope you guys like this video. Like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!